Hello friends, my name is Binaki and welcome to my channel Fintech Logics. Uh, today's topic of discussion is about digital lending verification process. So we have covered already uh, two videos, one on application submission digitization and one on data enrichment. This is the third one where we are talking about digitization in verification. Verification is a huge topic. So to, in today's video, we will focus on SMS data verification. So let's begin. Just to give a re recap, we are talking about application data enrichment. We have already covered these two. And now in today, in verification, we'll talk about SMS. Now we saw that in data enrichment, we got data from all these sources, right? And we are focusing today on primarily SMS, okay? Now let's look at SMS data. So when we uh, say that, okay, SMS data is being utilized for underwriting, is it all SMS? No, it's only financial SMSs. Now, uh, what is the definition of financial SMS? Financial SMS is somewhere uh, where there is a mention of some amount or some account or some event that is related to your financial information, right? So that data is being utilized. Just to give an example, let's say income, right? So every month a salaried person gets a salary credited on his account, right? So and so date, account is created. So this is income, right? If it is not a salaried person, you will get an incoming credit on the account, right? Account transfer. Now account transfer is can be incoming or outgoing remittances, which happens. So um, uh, with some amount, and there would be some account, uh, um, some bank uh, name which is mentioned, etc. Third one is about credit card spends. So this is about where all you have spent with some details of where you have spent. Fourth thing is about investments. So where all you are making some investment purchases, right? if you are getting some dividends as well, right? So all these come as investment. Now, in financial messages, what details are important to us or a credit bureau, a credit uh, underwriting? SMS sender, who is sending it? So uh, somebody might fraud it by sending a same content of salary uh, from another number, right? So. In, instead, if it is from, let's say, ICIC bank or HDFC bank registered sender, then it makes a authentic one, right? So SMS sender is important. Date to decide within this period. So if I want to do my analysis of last three months, six months or nine months, date becomes important that when this transaction has happened. Association. So association is who I'm paying to. So if I'm, let's say, credit card purchase, I'm making a payment to Zomato. So that tells about my food pattern, right? Food spending pattern. If I'm paying to Amazon, then it tells about my e-commerce pattern, correct? Now, amount. What amount I have spent to aggregate to see that total spending or total credits, total debits like that. Purpose. So this is not for all the transactions, all the SMS, but some cases in case of investments, I get to know that, okay, what is the purpose of this transaction? Location, where it has been spent by specifically for spend category, uh, if it says that, okay, I have spent in uh, Fisherman Raf Hallu Road, right? So that tells about the location that this person is spending in this area, right? Or this city. Now, this also gives us information about limit and balance. So if it is a credit card, then it gives information about limit. But if it is about a, a normal UPI payment, 
it gives me information about the balance of the account right so these are the sms which are seeked for and can be used now let's see how i am using these right so basically my intention is to find out how financially sound the customer is this is all alternate data right otherwise i get some piece of this information from credit bureau right so for that let's say i let's say min max and average credits for n months so in last 6 months i want to calculate how many times there has been credit for the customer a salary credit for the customer so it, then it should come as 6 then it would, it would show the continuity that okay for 6 months the customer has been um, in the job with the salary now min max average account payout for n months so this will just to show my debits right so because i have to calculate my debt to income ratio so the first one is about credit second one is about debit, debit number of debts and average debt payouts now if there is a loan emi payment that piece of sms can also be used so that will tell me that okay there is already emis going on on the customer and how many emis are there average expenses with categories clear continuity of credits per month so if there is regularly uh, um, money being uh, created in my account or not i can know average continuity of investment does this person make an investment every month or every quarter employer and creditor information so normally in your salary you get uh, employer details that from this employer you have been created or from this uh, buyer you have been given some amount uh, for providing goods and services right gross and net cash flows now when i aggregate all credits and debits right I can definitely calculate gross and net cash flows. Sanctioned and available credit card limits. So now if I am using two to three cards and uh, it shows me that okay your limit was this and after making a purchase your limit has been updated as this right. So that piece of information helps us to find out what is the aggregated credit limit that customer has that shows in turn the credit uh, uh, history, the, uh, the scores of the customer and also there would be uh, the financial uh, well-being of the customer location spends and purchase we talked about this one that okay where all uh, he has made spends or uh, where he has done purchases continuity of bank account so a, a typical bank account for how long this bank account is being used and also payment delays or penalties so if there is penalties or pen, pen, uh, delays for anything you would have got some sms and that information can also be used now these piece of information are calculated so there are there are a lot of vendors in market who can do an analysis on this sms information after customer has given rights to take this data and then they give you pre-calculated set of parameters now i have seen there are companies like uh, a uh, lot of companies which are there in market who keeps in 400 500 uh, parameters also algo 360 is one of them that uh, gives a lot of these parameters pre-calculated so now i can or the credit uh, uh, underwriter team or the strategy team can find out what parameters they want to use based on the kind of loan they are offering the ticket size or the loan size that they are offering and they can include these in the automated credit underwriting model and based on that i calculate a score and that gives me ready-made history of sms data in milliseconds right but one caveat here that we have to understand is that all this is good if customers sms is there in the mobile device right so let's say a lot of times if customers would have changed the mobile and it has not been synced then you lose a lot of sms sometimes customers delete the sms's also which are not required for them so in those cases sometimes we do not get a correct picture that is why this is still taken as an alternative data for underwriting and not the primary source still we look at your underwriting uh, depends on primarily credit bureau data 
and this data can be used for enrichment purpose. So that is the model how this is being used at this point of time. I hope uh, this would have made some points clear how SMS data is procured, how SMS data is converted to some derived attributes and how it is being used for credit models. If you have any clarifications regarding this, please let me know. In my next video, I would cover about location data, uh, the other data elements which we have collected uh, from device through data enrichment and we'll look at how credit underwriting is being automated. Thanks a lot for uh, watching viewers.